Alright, peace and greetings YouTubers. Alright, 2012 AMAs, let's get right into it. But before we go there, let me just say, this is my AMA hat. I rocked it in the last AMA video, and since I'll never get a chance to wear this thing anywhere else, ever in life, or out in public, I'm going to wear it today. And if you don't like my hat, I don't need you to comment about it, okay? Just save the commentary for the actual award show. Gracias. Okay, so, if you watched the award show tonight... I'm sure if you were a big R&B hip-hop fan, you were probably a little disappointed because there weren't that many acts for your caliber of entertainment, I guess. And you probably flipped to Housewives of Atlanta or something else. But, you know, if you were a big country, alternative, rock, pop fan, this was your night. Um, Usher opened the show. He gave a pretty energetic performance. Vocally, you already know how he's going to sound because Usher's somebody who refuses to lip-sync, which I appreciate. I understand the fact that he's an artist and he loves his artistry. And I'm like, Usher, that's great. I love that you love to sing live. But you know, sometimes when the occasion arrives where you're going to be doing a whole lot of acrobatic and physically, I'm about to say physical, physically demanding things on stage, you know, sometimes that backing track can help you out a whole lot. I mean, honestly... Everybody, okay, time out. This is my deal on lip syncing. I don't like lip syncing, but I understand a lot of people lip sync because they still want to have a voice in 20, 30 years and they don't want to end up like how Christina Aguilera sounds right now. And then there's other people who lip sync because they're just lazy and or they can't sing live. Or, but Usher, you could have had a pass to lip sync tonight. I'm going to just say that, all right? But I did enjoy, um, I enjoyed what you gave us and I do admire your artistry and the fact that you like to sing live. Now, I wish you would put more effort into the albums that you've been giving us, because I don't really like this new one I heard. And, um, that's just me. But let me stop being a hater. I still enjoy Usher's music. Moving right along, Justin Bieber came. His performance was pretty good, too. I, I, I actually, while we're at it, you know, one thing I noticed tonight is a lot of the acts have very similar performances. Like, the end of Usher's performance, which I thought he killed it towards the end with the choreography, and the end of Justin's, they, was, they were so familiar, and it wasn't like they were copying each other, but just everybody has the same type of performance. Now, like, even if you throw Chris Brown in there, Chris, Usher, Justin, and sometimes Neil, if he dances, the four of them have these very similar performances when they do the high up temples because you see the lasers, you see the dancers, and it's like you've seen one, you've seen them all. Not saying they suck or anything, but I'm just saying it's very redundant at this point. So, at, watching Justin's performance, I feel like I had just seen it earlier in the show. But Justin actually did a very nice job. I appreciated he did his whole little acoustic thing. He, it was kind of corny with the throwback, snap back, going backwards. I was like, oh yeah, this, you're just so cool, Justin. But, you know, he did a great job with both songs he did. Now, what kind of made me look at him sideways was when he won that award and he did the acceptance speech talking about his haters. And I, I don't know if he was talking to me, because you want to call me out, Justin, but... I was like, Justin, I'm glad that you're on album number two, but you know, usually you do the hater speech like four or five albums down the line where you're still relevant, because you know, album number two doesn't say much, because I mean, Sierra was on album number two, and we thought you was here to stay. So Justin, I'd say humble down just a tad bit, because honestly, the only person I think that can go up there and do a, this is out to all my big hater speech is probably Rihanna, because she's going to keep shoving albums down our throat whether we ask for them or not, because if you follow me, you know good and well, I've been bashing Rihanna since 2010, and I just gave up. I was like, forget it. She's cool. As a matter of fact, I even like her little What What Now song with a new CD. Moving right along, The Wanted performed, and y'all know how I feel about them. I already said they're like the most nursing home group to watch because they don't dance, and then as far as singing, they're, they're cool. I actually liked the song that they were singing, but um, I was still bored out of my mind watching them. I don't understand. I was like, I just feel like if you're going to be a boy band, y'all got to give me the whole boy band experience. You got to do the whole NSYNC Backstreet Boys thing. Like, I was, do something. You wake me up. Y'all just can't stand on these platforms all day and sing. I mean, and y'all are already older than me, so I'm like, maybe I'm going to just make my own boy band and call it a day. And um, then there was the guy in the group who I was wondering why he wasn't singing. He was just standing there front and center. And I was figuring out what he was about to do. And then he started, I guess he, he, he must be the vocalist in the group. So he carried the song and did his grunting and growling. But I kind of wished JC from NSYNC or AJ from Backstreet Boys would have came and set him down because I don't think he was seeing him vocally. But... The Wanted, I actually like the song. I've never heard it, but just goes to show how far behind I'm falling in music as far as being relevant. But um, I did like the song. I just wish, I need them, The Wanted, I need y'all to at least know how to do a two-step, alright? But until then, I don't want you on stage. And um, Nicki Minaj, um, her performance was a Nicki Minaj performance, and I just felt that 
her performance should have been for a more urban demographic. She already knew good and well what the artist was going to look like, so I don't know why she would try to go and do the whole hardcore, I'm Nikki, I'm going to rap now. Because the crowd didn't understand. All the happy Beckys in the audience were ready to jump and, and get down with, you know, Nikki's really commercial, generalized songs. And she went hardcore on them, so they were all lost. So I think, I mean, I, I, I respect the artistry, I guess, but, you know, I think the crowd's a little let down. They wanted to jump and have the lasers and the, the streamers and stuff fall down, and Nikki said no. I'm, I'm, we're gonna be hood. So she put on the Mary J. Blige stay down outfit. The stay down, when they gonna remember this? Put that outfit on and had the, the snow and stuff falling, and she did that. But I was wondering if she was drunk because them acceptance speeches, I couldn't understand. She, oh my god, my my barbs, wherever you are. I just, like she sounded like old girl off the nanny. Just barbs, I just. I really love you all. I'm like, Lord, I'm trying to picture if she would have ever ran for student body in high school. You know, if you just vote for me, school's going to be so good. But, let me stop messing with Nikki. I, I'm too hard on her. But she's doing it, though. I'll say it. You know, she's shut up a few of her critics, including me. Um, but Nikki did her thing. Oh, I left out the Carly Rae, you, you know, the, the um, Carly Maybe girl. She had a performance. It was okay. Moving right along. Kelly Clarkson, who I love near and dear to my heart, gave a wonderful performance. Vocally, I really enjoyed what she did. And I saw she done lost some weight, and she tried to put on that mini skirt and show a little piece of thigh. I said, go on, Kelly. You bad. Let's go with me. Um, and then Kesha performed. Kesha's somebody that I find interesting because I don't check for her. I don't really buy her albums. I know all of her songs because the radio plays it all the time. But um, when she, it's time for her to perform, I never know what she's going to do. But I feel that... She does a great job of filling her void, especially in 2012. You, she's not somebody that's a dancer. She's not a hardcore vocalist or a powerhouse vocalist. But for some weird, strange reason, she can kind of fill the little bubble that she's been put in. So for a Kesha performance, I thought it was interesting. I like the little drummers. I like she tried to dance. She tried to do a little bit of everything. I said, okay. Now, actually, I'm not going to say that. That's not nice. So... She gave a pretty good Kesha performance. So, Kesha, kudos to you. You bad. School me. I've obviously been schooled. Um, no Doubt, which is one of my favorite groups. You might not be able to tell, but they, I got a No Doubt poster on that side of the wall. But I don't ever film over there. But um, I, I think they needed to turn up Gwen's mic because you couldn't... The band over like drowned her out, so you couldn't hear her. And like the song already sounds kind of weird, so hearing it live just makes it even weirder. So you probably would have been like, is she on key? But she actually was, because that's how the song sounds. So she did great, it's just you couldn't hear it. Plus, doesn't, Gwen looks good for her age, while I was thinking about that. Like, Gwen, you look really good, Gwen. And Gwen's the only person that can rock red lipstick, so Taylor Swift stopped biting off Gwen, alright? Gwen was doing it for years. Taylor, I'll let you have it, though, because you had a really good night, too. Um, speaking of Taylor Swift, um, I actually... Oddly enough, enjoyed her performance. And y'all know I'd be bored with Taylor, because Taylor would be giving some of the most nursing home performances, too. I'd be like, man, wrap it up. PBS doing prime time, Taylor. But she, um, I don't know if she was singing live or not. I, I don't know. But I, I enjoyed the show visually. I thought it was really cool. Um, it was pretty well put together. Um, Linkin Park, I missed. All right, somebody called me, and I had to step away from the TV for a second, so I miss Linkin Park, but I'm sure they're great. Linkin Park is always awesome, so they were cool. Um, my favorite performance of the night went to Pink. Pink just... Pink set the bar. Like, after Pink finished, I was like, turn the TV off, we can go home. And, and that's what made me wonder earlier, because I was saying, or thinking, like, a lot of these performers, if the power was out, they wouldn't be in, you know, they wouldn't be able to freaking entertain a pack of sheep. Just, like, because they're so dependent on all the lasers and the gadgets and the dancers and the, the pro tools and the pyrotechnics and the water that shoots out of the ground and the steam and the fog and the smoke and everything else. Like, and that, that was my argument I was making earlier about the Justin and the Usher and the Chris's and all of them. They can dance their behinds off, they can give you a good show, but there's so much other stuff going on, you can't really just focus on what they're doing because the cameraman just doesn't know who to look at because you're doing this and I don't know where somebody jumps here and then somebody does a backflip and then Usher's doing his thing and then Chris comes out of the roof and Justin jumps out of the state and it's too much going on sometimes. But what I enjoyed about Pink was she had her theme for what she wanted to do for her song which was very similar to the music video and she just had her choreographed 
routine she sang. It's just her and a man on stage and a set. And they utilize that entire stage. She sang it live because, you know, Pink is somebody that don't like lip sync either. And, um... She, they just, it was good. I was like, damn, Pink. Like, because originally, like, me and my friend always talk about Pink always flying. Because, you know, ever since the Funhouse tour, she always gets strapped and just shoot up. And I was like, Pink, if you, if your feet leave the ground this time, I'm going to be mad at you. But she said, no, I got something else for that. I'm going to do some acrobatics and some stunts and some flips. So, her old boy grabbed her from her head and snatched her back and threw her on the bed. And she rolling. I was like, okay, Pink. That was a really good performance. Like, that, that was really, really good. I should buy another copy of your album, Pink. Um... So that was really good. She set the bar. After that, I was like, everybody else can go home. Like, I think Pink and Kelly brought it home tonight. Um, Pitbull. I'm going to say the same thing I always say with people like Pitbull and Far East Movement and the party rock anthem people. They give you great songs to party to, but you don't want to see them perform those songs live because it's just not, they're not songs that you'd want to hear live because, first of all, the musicality isn't there. You, there's not a lot of instruments. It's hard to replicate the song with a band, so you just get a DJ. So really, and because none of them really sing or do anything and they kind of rap, you, it's just like watching a party on stage that you're not invited to. So it's kind of like, oh, okay. So when like Pitbull and Far East Movement and all them other ones perform, I don't care. But the song, I guess, is catchy. Um, oh, God. Christina Aguilera. Lord, give me the strength. Like, Christina, this is my beef with you. Now, everybody runs around and, 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 and calls you the voice of the generation and all. And I believe it because I've seen how high your range and how, how high and low your range can go. And I believe you can hit them notes. But as of late, you have been very hit and miss vocally. Like, honestly, I wanted to give you some voice lessons so I could use it as a tax write-off for charity. But, I, you know, your people just didn't get back to me. They didn't call back when I left a message. But I'm just like, Christina, you just had a CD come out. And... This was supposed to be the performance that relaunched, I guess, the Lotus album and get everybody excited. And, you know, because I haven't bought your album yet and I didn't know if I was going to buy it or not. And I was like, well, maybe she's going to... And, you know, you presented some newer songs that we haven't heard. But I was like, the performance was so vocally distracting. And then you were stuffed up in your outfit. And, you know, I don't judge people by how they look. But, you know, embrace yourself, like you said. But you still got to do it in a way where you don't look gross. But, like... I don't know, Christina, man. And it, it sucks, because I actually like Christina. I, I used to love Christina when I was little. Like, when I was still a TRO baby, I remember I used to be pissed off watching TRO, because Christina Aguilera's Come On Over, Over Baby song was out the same time as Britney's Lucky, and Britney's Lucky would always be number one. And I was like, dang, y'all can't give Christina a chance ever. Christina always had to be number two or number three, because NSYNC was out too. But, um, oh, well, Christina, it's just, you know, you do something, because the I ain't even talking about you, no know, Just forget it. Christina fans, I'm sorry, but I, I, she, I wasn't feeling it at all. I was just like, I was giving her what the F face. And then the fact that you're a judge on a singing competition, it just makes your credibility go even further down. And, like, you kept trying all these notes, and they just weren't coming. And notes kept saying, no, no. Like, Christina opened her mouth, and the, her vocal cords say, no, no, not, not today. We off. Uh-uh. We close at five. Psh. So, sorry, Christina. Um, am I leaving people out? Carrie Underwood, excellent performance. Like, Carrie Underwood always gives a good performance. She's great. I think people have kind of... I, I don't know. I think she's a little underrated at the moment. She should be a little bit bigger. But Carrie Underwood always does her thing. Um, and then Brandy, who I thought would have performed since she has an album that just came out, instead presented which threw me off. Because I'm like, Brandy, I loved you, but you needed to be on stage tonight. I loved you on stage last night, and you were great, and that was a wonderful show. But... You should have been on stage. And I, it's not you, it's your management, but whatever. So, you know, she's doing the Whitney tribute, and I'm thinking they're about to bring some people out. But before Brandy could finish her sentence, she was presenting to the next person. I said, damn, y'all can't let Whitney have a tribute? They were like, the hell with her? Let's bring out Chris Luda and uh, Swiss Beats. That was like the time they had the Britney Spears tribute at the VMAs. And while she was getting her tribute, she had to present Beyonce to come out. I'm like, they just killed two birds with one stone, huh? I'm glad they weren't at the funeral. They would have just pushed the casket over so Pitbull and them could get on there. That's a little rude. Whitney, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Bless her heart. I'm, oh, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. But, you know, I really just felt they could have gave Whitney a little bit more. Especially since Whitney's one of the people with the most AMAs in history. I think she's third behind Michael Jackson in Alabama. So, it was kind of shady that, you know, within the same breath, they gave Whitney a tribute and then moved right on to Chris Brown jumping around with no shirt on, scaring people in the audience, almost elbowing the cameraman. I saw that, Chris. But, um, 
you know, but anyway, Brandy looked nice. And um rest in peace, Whitney, we love you. But the the Luda Swiss and and that's the other thing. I was like, I didn't even know they had a song out. What were they promoting? They could let Brandy do something. Let Brandy just do a run. Do a riff. Just sing happy birthday to somebody. But um the Ludacris Swiss Beats Chris Brown song is actually catchy. I was kinda like, alright, I can see one of my little dance teams working with this. But um that performance was what it was. It was it was cool, I guess. Um, Stevie Wonder is a legend, and that is all I'm going to say. Moving right along, um, they close the show with that dang, I don't know what that song, you know the song. Let me tell you, when I first heard the song, I didn't know what the lyrics were. I thought they were saying open condom style. Open condom style. What the hell type of stuff is this? And I saw all, and then, like, my kids at work would be dancing to it. I'm like, ah, oh, we ain't dancing to no open condom, nothing. Turn it off. Good and then go read. Can't even make time for that. But, um... I'm going to go to bed because I'm extremely tired and it's been a long weekend. Life is great at the moment though. Subscribe. I hope you all have a great night. If I offended you or pissed you off, I'm sorry for not being sorry. Anyway, deuces.